Welcome to Mommy Works. If you're returning, welcome back. Today's video is about surviving COVID. Yep, surviving COVID. This is about me sharing my experience um, during and post COVID. So to begin with, um, just like everybody else, I've done everything I can to protect myself and my family. Um, I don't think I went overboard, but I did what I needed to do to obviously um, avoid being exposed to it, right? I have taken the vaccination, did all that. I have done everything that we've been told from the onset of this pandemic, avoided unnecessary exposure, let's just say that. Um, I didn't risk anything, and by the grace of God, um, everybody was okay. And then, uh, recently, I got it. Let me tell you, I have been sick. I've gotten sick in the past. Um, maybe a couple times, slightly serious illnesses. Other than that, I'm pretty much a healthy person, right? When I knew I wasn't feeling right, it wasn't a slow start. It was just out of nowhere. Something is invading your body. You don't even know what. There's no warning. There is no like, oh, I think I'm just not feeling well. I feel like I'm under the weather. Let me do this. No. So when I first got it, and I'm not even going to talk about where I think or where I thought I got it. That's besides the point. It doesn't matter where I got it or how I got it. The point is I was exposed to it. This is just me sharing my heart with you um, and what I've learned post COVID. Um, pretty much, pretty much the first couple years, we went through the motions of being careful, washing hands, not touching face. Everything that we brought from the grocery store, we washed. We have done everything we can. And I'm not taking away from that. Apparently, obviously, we were protected, right? For our comfort that we did everything that we can to protect ourselves as well as others. So I did get it. Um, within a few hours, um, the headache was incredible. The sore throat was amazing. It just felt like something was invading my body. And the second day, the headache was unbelievable. There was no word to describe it. I've had headaches before and not just your regular headache, like, you know, one of those, I think I have a headache, let me take a Tylenol type of thing. Um, I have experienced migraine, so I know headache, but this one, I don't have any word to explain it. So the next day I was out of commission. The sore throat was unbelievable. I, it just felt like something was just you know, when you use those wire pad to clean dishes, you know what I mean? That those rough metal wire things that we use for our heart, you know, like when stuff gets stuck on at the bottom of the pot, you just scrape it. It felt like something like that was scraping my throat every time I coughed. The coughing was unbelievable. Every time I coughed, it felt like my throat was being slashed or that that really harsh surface was just scraping the inside of my throat. That's how it felt. And then, that's not enough. It felt like something was suffocating me. Like, in the midst of that cough, it felt like something is clogging my windpipe and I couldn't breathe. You know? It, in, in your mind, you're thinking it's like a few seconds, but it just felt like lifetime um, for that cough spasm to pass, that, that coughing just to pass because you're struggling to breathe in the meantime. It just felt like something was shutting down my windpipe and I couldn't breathe. So you're fighting to, to, to cough, at the same time, you're struggling to breathe. I've never experienced anything like it. The second day, towards the evening, 
I felt as though life was completely being sucked right out of me. I just felt like I had no energy. There was no life in me. And I figured something was really wrong because I didn't know initially it was COVID because, you know, I, I've done everything I can. I didn't feel like I was that exposed to anything to suspect COVID right away. And everybody talks about how the symptom is different. It's changing. It's just like a flu symptom, yada, yada, yada. Okay. So I thought maybe because the weather is changing, I have something like that. But the, the second day towards the evening, I'm like, life is trying to escape and we have got to kind of try and maintain. So I tried to go downstairs because uh, honestly, I didn't think I had COVID and to get a couple of things, something to eat so that I can gain some kind of energy. It was an incredible experience to try and go down the stairs. I managed to do that. And then now I can kind of laugh about it, but I, at the bottom of the stairs, I stood there and I looked at the, the, the island in the kitchen and I'm thinking, how am I going to get there? Like it's just a few steps, but I had nothing. I've heard people talk about that, especially the first wave of COVID. Um, people talked about how it just robs you from all energy whatsoever and you couldn't do anything. I mean, I've heard of it, but to actually experience it was like, wow. Um, I just did not know if I can take another step. So I had to push myself, um, went into the kitchen, grabbed a single banana, I turned right around and I started walking back to the same stairs I just came down from and that was it. I was spent. Everything in me was gone. And it felt like the inside of my body was being held by my skin. Everything was crumbling down within me. Like it just felt like and my skin was just holding this wet thing. And when I fail, I just went boom. There was no warning. There was no wait, 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 let me catch myself. It literally just went like a wet towel. I was still coherent. Um, but the level of weakness that I had experienced at that point, I thought, okay, so this is what they are talking about. This is how COVID takes you up. Like, honestly, I did not feel like there was nothing left in me. I didn't have an ounce of energy. Got up and went back to bedroom and I said, we gotta check, this could be COVID. So with that in mind, um, a week or so before I went somewhere and they were handing out these home COVID test kit. Um, and I grabbed two or three of them because, you know, family members and all, and we did the test. You know how the instruction tells you uh, the app tells you to wait for 15 minutes. <clears throat> it's going to at least take 15 minutes for you to know one way or another. All that good stuff. And after we did the test, it did not even take 30 seconds for it to tell me I did have COVID. Yep. Just like that. It did not take even 30 seconds for it to show I tested positive for COVID. So starts with disbelief. I can't believe I have a thing. And then immediately you're thinking, okay, so what does this mean? What is going to happen to me? Which is it? Because everybody talks about the symptoms are different. It impacts people differently. I didn't know what to expect. So the unknown was incredible. It just felt like there is this something that comes and clogs your windpipe, like something closes down. I, I can't tell you what it is. I'm, I am not in any way in the medical field. So if this doesn't make sense, can't help you. But it just felt like there was something that was shutting down my windpipe, like down the throat. And I'm like, eh. while you're coughing, you're trying to get some air in there. And it's not like a few seconds. It feels like it, it lasts forever. And then we figured, okay, so time to isolate. And we did all that. Well, once I found out it was crazy COVID, boy, 
it got really bad. I mean, first couple of days after that, I'm like, okay, we got this. I'm gonna do this, that, and the other. And you're mentally prepared. You're you're like, okay, we gotta do this. Mm -hmm. You can plan all you want, but COVID is going to do what COVID is going to do. I even did a couple of things that no one thought I would be able to do um, after that day. And then the voice goes, sometimes it happens midstream, like mid-sentence. Um, boy, let me tell you though, I have never felt anything like what COVID makes you feel like. Um, I can only imagine and I was thinking about the people that went through COVID during the first and the second and the third wave. Supposedly, this was supposed to be the easier kind of COVID, right? I was really thinking about the people that went through it when it was really hard. And honestly, I don't know how they survived it. If I went through what I went through and supposedly this is the easier kind that, you know, everybody's supposed to be living with, or kind of expect to go through and you'll be okay. It, I was really thinking about, I don't know how those people actually survived it. For those that survived it, God, God bless their hearts. But for me, to actually find myself in that situation was a different story. So long story short, um, went through the coughing and you know the next few days it just feels like you know something is literally invading your body like i could i could tell something's up within my chest like my lungs some you know i, I don't know i i don't want to freak out anyone but it just feels like some foreign stuff is happening especially when you're having that cough fit like you're, you're coughing and you're going through that and then you, you, you try to settle down in your your body. Maybe even your organs are trying to go back to their places because you're like <gasps> trying to get some air in there. And then it, it just tries to settle down and you just you just feel stuff happening within your own body. Like I'm like, I know this thing is invading my body. Um, I did everything I can. Um, the natural remedies, the African remedies, uh, the vitamin Cs, food, the water, the you can't help but really sleep. I mean, it knocks you out. Let me just tell you that. There is no, well, I think I'm getting tired. Now I'll take a break. It's just going to put you out. One minute you're talking, next second you're out. That's how weakening this thing is. Uh, it's very tiring. It's really, really, really energy draining. Um, and then your 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 brain is racing. You're, you're thinking like, what is this? I was thinking about, oh my God, I can't believe people actually have gone through something worse than this is what I was thinking about. Because it was really bad. So just like anything and everything else, you also go through some of the emotions. Like I was angry first that I got this thing. At the end, at the tail of it, supposedly when we're supposed to be done with it, a uh, whole pandemic was supposed to go away and we're, you know, life is supposed to go back to its normal state, whatever the new norm is or the new normal is. And to get it at that point, at, at first, I really was slightly angry. Like, I can't believe I got it now. I cannot believe. And then you kind of think about all the different things that you've done to protect yourself and da -da 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 -da, but you still got it. So I went through the anger emotion first. The disbelief is like playing tricks in your head because the unknown is what gets you there. Like, I don't know what it's going to be like post COVID. I don't know if I'm going to be the same person. I don't know how it's going to impact me and what it is that I'm supposed to expect. So it makes you feel hopeless, helpless. You just wait until your body heals itself, practically. You just have to know how to manage your own psyche, like your own thought process so that you don't get into the deeper state of mind because you're thinking all the what ifs. The what ifs 
are not a good place to be. Um, you have no appetite initially, zero appetite whatsoever. It just makes you want to gag because you're coughing, stuff is coming up. Sorry, I didn't mean to gross you out, but that's reality. And I think that that was what was causing the whole, I can't breathe, like, Ugh. I am fighting to get some air down there. And then you go through all that, you keep waiting and waiting, you just have to wait it out. You're isolated, not like you're surrounded with people, people are going in and out and you know, you're it. You are it. You, your mind, your thoughts, you, me, myself and I, together, fighting the thing. I, I won't lie to you, sometimes it gets to you. What kind of illness causes people not to be around people like, ugh? Because I guess maybe um, culturally, that's what we know. That is not what we experience. Like when somebody's ill, you just, you just don't leave them alone. Um, you're surrounded with people, you're surrounded with families. You're so, I mean, you don't even know you're sick. You're, you're at that point. You are like taken care of. You are lavished with, what can I do? I mean, that's when people kind of fuss over somebody and try to take care of. That's just the culture. With COVID, you're it. You and your God. Uh, slowly but surely, you go over that hump you see the light at the end of the tunnel. You start feeling like your body is trying to heal itself. And then it surprises you like, ah, it's coming back. Oh my God, the cough is back. That whole scratchy throat is back. Somebody, Something is like cutting your throat. Like it felt like all of a sudden my inside was being cut. That's just the nature of it. And I haven't heard a whole lot of people actually saying that. And that's the reason why I'm doing this video because what helped me could help somebody because it kind of gives you that sense of, okay, I'm not alone in this. This is what people have experienced. This will come and then it will go. But then, you know, they always say uh, it impacts people differently. But if it helps somebody, trust me, it feels like somebody is cutting you inside. Like you have this big scratch, like your throat, it burns. It just feels like somebody went in there and scratched both and it just, it just feels like it's cutting back out it's like it's all in any case you feel like okay this is this is getting better i can feel myself back again the body's trying to heal you actually feel like you want to eat something which by the way even if you didn't feel like or you don't feel like eating you have to push yourself to eat learn from me Trust me, you have to push yourself to put some kind of food in your body. Or you can experience it like I did and feel like your inside is being held by your skin. It just went like, Phew! and you're like, somebody put your inside in a pillowcase. That's how, that's, that's how I felt when I fell on the stairs. I felt like my inside, my entire body, the inside of my body was being held by my skin. That's how the whole thing was completely out of control. It wouldn't just went. It's pretty scary. I, I mean, it kind of feels like, oh, that's just how we go. By the grace of God, obviously I'm still here. You know, that's the hard part. But let me tell you what the hardest is. Post COVID, get better. You know, you're taking care of yourself and you, you can get up, you can be around people. This is not a fun place to be put in that situation where people cannot be around you or you cannot be around people. And that's the hardest. I did not know what kind of image would people would have from me post COVID because I felt like I was like walking around with some stuff that is not so good um, we think about being labeled um people usually don't talk about the fact that they went through covid for that same reason and that's why i'm doing it. we need to 
talk about or you need to say something to whoever else was around you or you were around if you know that you have been exposed to covid because then they need to go take care of themselves and protect their families and everybody else not saying anything about it is not fair is not good it's not healthy it's just not fair for me not to let people know i have been exposed to covid and now i have covid because apparently i did get it somewhere right so if you have it do yourself your family people around you a favor it's okay to say yep i can't be whatever place you think i'm going to be and you can't be here either and just isolate yourself do what you need to do and focus on you getting better Don't worry about what people are going to say. Trust me when I say this, it is not easy because I felt it. I did not want to be seen or looked at as somebody that has some kind of gross disease. I don't know what it was. It's called COVID. None of us know 100% what this thing is going to do to us anyways. But am I going to live in fear? No. 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 I was given yet another opportunity to live life. If anything else, I'm telling you this. If anything else, it gave me the reality check the wake up call i needed to say slow down on me stop and think you can't continue going a million miles a minute because obviously for something like this your body is going to need all the immunity that you have to heal itself Trust me. I'm being completely honest, transparent, vulnerable, whatever you want to call it. There is going to be a lot that we are going to learn from this experience. I know my experience compared to what others have gone through is nothing. Compared to the first, second and third wave of this pandemic, I really am not trying to make a mountain out of a mole. I'm just sharing my little experience in case it helps somebody and I have a reason for saying this. If you have it, it's okay for you to say I have it. I just need to have the time that I need to have to go through it, take care of yourself, take care of your family. Don't go out there just because you think people are going to think of you some type of way. It's okay. Let them think what they will. If anything else you're protecting them. It isn't for you anymore. You have it. But you're protecting them. So it's okay. It's okay for you to say this is what's going on. This is what happens. If anything else they'll pray for you at least, right? Prayer works. When everything fails, prayer works. I remember feeling like Ugh. the the different emotions come and go. and then you recycle them back you start all over again with the anger with the hopelessness with the helplessness um why how and the unknown how is this going to change me how is this going to impact me what does this mean for me all the different things and and the different questions that's going to preoccupy your your mind it's no fun at all post covid wasn't a good experience none of us needed this but since it's our reality and we are going through it we might as well learn from it right so what exactly am i saying unfortunately to covid for me to say stop stop and prioritize take care of yourself Lately, especially on the Mommy Works channel, I have been talking a lot about taking a break. Before it breaks you, take a break. Whatever it is you think you're going to accomplish by spinning and spinning and spinning all day, all night. Take a minute. Take a break. Listen to your body. 
I'm not trying to be melodramatic here. I really am not trying to be dramatic at all. I'm just being real because the thing was real. And I know, I mean, even to this day, I can't tell you I am 100% back yet. And at some point, people were calling me the Energizer Bunny, and I refuse to accept that anymore. I'm not a machine, I'm a human being. Take it from me. With COVID, let me tell you, you do a couple of things, and you feel like you just lifted like a huge mountain. That energy level isn't there. That's why I'm saying, I don't know how long this is going to last. I don't know what it means. At least I'm still breathing. I can still walk around. I can at least be around people and I can do what I need to do. However, at a slow pace. With a very, very conscious mind. There are a couple of you, one or two people out there listening to this video going, I can kind of relate to that because I still push myself. Let me tell you. It is not worth it. It's not worth it. You can do what it is that you're setting out to do longer if you are healthier, stronger. If you're not good to yourself, you're not good to anyone. If you don't, take a break. Something will come to break you. It is not a good way of breaking at all. So without having to be slapped by reality, honestly, even though I've talked about this for the last, I want to say about five, six years, I haven't really done much about it. Um, I remember going to um, Africa. I was in Ethiopia. A friend of uh, mine and I went to Ethiopia because we do some work there. And we decided to take a break. And we went to this nice place. It was just a beautiful place that we were sitting at. And at that point, we were talking about um, taking a break, like recharging. Um, we were talking about burnout. We said quite a bit about how we both were sort of like burning from both ends. We were just going and going and going and not stopping to the point where people were saying, you two are carrying way too much. You need to share the burden. And we're like, okay, come join then. Take some of it. In any case, we talked a lot about that. And then within 10, 15 minutes, we both found ourselves on a laptop working. And then we caught ourselves and said, what did we just talk about and what are we doing now? And at that point, we I, I, <laughs> I remember actually um, sending a couple emails and somebody emailed me back and said mom if we're crying out loud take a break stop it that's what woke us up and we talked about it and uh, because of that um the whole take a break thing was incepted so from time to time since then i've been doing a take a break type of activity with different groups i've done it with individuals i've done it with groups um and then Life is so good, I have to do it myself. So if you haven't thought about taking a break, some kind of sabbatical, some kind of time, whether it's a few minutes a day, a few hours a week, a day, a month, whatever it is you can do, if you do not do that to recharge, you really, really are taking away so much from yourself so much from your family, so much from everybody else that needs you around. If you're not around, you're not good to anyone. If you're not strong, if you can't be at your best, you're not good to anyone. There's always something to be done. There's always somebody that would say more. And as long as you can dish out, trust me. Trust me. You gotta know how to draw the line somewhere. Lately, I've been saying this, so I'm going to say it again. Pour into yourself. Feed your brain, your mind, your soul, your body, your spirit. Yeah, everybody talks about this whole holistic approach. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be slapped with any kind of reality, trust me. For me, you know, kind of COVID got me there. Uh, I know this isn't my first rodeo either. I've been slapped around a couple times. 
for me to say never again i'm not going to do this but then i turned right around and continued to grind non-stop so i am holding myself accountable um maybe one of the reasons why i'm actually doing this in public and share this with you so we can all hold each other accountable you can share your experiences post covid you're still listening to your body you're still listening to every little thing like is it coming back can i get it again is this changing me am i going to be any different because of it you will continue to listen to your body and i think it's a good thing it is okay to slow down it's okay to take time you are to yourself to yourself and your family and the people that need you the most now i'm making a point to say this is where i draw the line this is where i'm going to step back and take a break and this is where i am going to start recharging and i it, it is a very conscious decision it is a deliberate act you really have to do that you really have to say okay this is where this is where i stop and now you know how your calendar if you're anything like me is completely filled with from this time to this time i do this and then this and then that and then you look at your calendar and go oh my god so put take a break on your calendar too so when you see that 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 take a break time roll over drop everything and take a break or life will make you take a break yeah, that's not a fun way of taking a break at all so with that said I, uh, the mind is an amazing thing it it knows how to tuck it back and kind of give you this clean slate again to get going you have to learn from it and move on so um i will continue talking about this but if you want to share what helped you uh, to get over whatever covid left behind for you drop a comment for me prayer was the biggest thing that helped me um knowing that I wanted to do more helped me to take it seriously and say yeah you're not made of metal and I'm going to take care of my me so take care of you take a break take time take a break make it a great day thanks for watching until next time